It's January, and even though I have a huge disconnect right now because of the weather outside, we're gonna go work on a project that's going to make my seed starting easier. Let's go to local Color Farms HQ. This is, this is the source of my disconnect. Everything is covered with snow and it has been snowing since yesterday. Not heavy snow, but consistent snow. So not a blizzard, but definitely, uh, definitely a goodly amount. It's hard to believe that in about two or three months, well, in about, in about two months, we're gonna be putting plants in the ground. And in about four months, we're gonna start seeing flowers. That's crazy to me, given the condition of the outside world. One of my first projects in next winter is to replace that door with a real one that opens and closes, has a lock on it. Um, I know that sounds incredibly insane given that we live in the middle of nowhere, but given how much we've invested in infrastructure out here, I want to have a little bit of security. But seriously though, that door makes that little heater in the corner work reasonably well, and that's what's gonna keep my plants alive. I'm not gonna lie, it's been so cold in this garage that paint froze. Um, like rock solid latex paint, it was crazy. Um, and that's what we're trying to combat. Today we're gonna work on building a germination chamber so that we can keep my seeds, my little seedlings, warm and moist and happy so that they grow into healthy, happy plants that I can put into the ground outside. That's still like mind boggling to me given that there is about four inches of snow, four inches of snow on the ground. Our goal today is to take this, insulate it, and use the crock pot where the, it's an instant pot that stopped pressurizing. It's everyone's favorite ride or die droid, R2D2. Um, <laughs> We're gonna use this and hopefully create a functional germination chamber. Fingers crossed. I feel like the sides and the top, sorry, the sides and the front and the back are gonna be the, e the easiest to cover. We have, ooh, that is a little dented. That might be problematic. Fingers crossed. Um, I've never done this before, so it's a little sketchy. We're using this poly, um, poly foam insulation. Uh, it's about an inch thick. Um, it's by Sika, which is a company I've used their products before and I really like them. Um, and we're just going to use, we're just going to line basically the top and bottom shelves with some of it and zip tie it and duct tape it because duct tape holds everything together to the shelves. Um, that should create a nice tight seal some escapes, that's fine. I just, we want to prevent as much escaping as possible. We want to keep as much of the moisture and, and the heat from escaping as possible. going to work like I wanted it to, so I'll be right back. There we go.
that could have really hurt. The rack that I'm using for my germination chamber is significantly bigger than the rack that I'm using for my grow lights. And the reason being was I felt like it was really important to give several inches of space in between each seedling in the germination chamber so that the moisture and the vapor and the heat could circulate better. I felt like if I crammed them all in there, the, 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 the moisture would have nowhere to go. So my little trays will fit very comfortably. They're 14 inches long and these shelves are 18 inches deep. So I should have two inches of clearance on both the front and back ends of my trays. They're nine, the trays are nine inches wide, which means these are, these are 40, um, 48 inches wide. I should be able to fit four to five trays comfortably on each shelf and still have room for air circulation. So there's two ways, two ways I'm gonna fasten the foam onto the shelf. This is the only one I really have to do on a shelf, um, with the exception of the bottom. Um, but I'm just gonna make a little foam piece that we put inside the chamber. Um, the way that we're gonna do this is we are going to zip tie the, um, the foam to the shelf, and then I'm going to make a seal out of extra wide Gorilla Tape. I don't want to tighten these too tightly because it, they will tear right through the foam insulation. onto the table so it doesn't come off while I'm doing this. Because that would be bad. I could seriously hurt a foot. This thing is not light at all. It is a very solid shelf. I'm trying to decide if I can get this on top by myself or if, or, or if I should go get Tall Husband. Let's just see how this goes. If it doesn't work, we'll go get Tall Husband. He gives me so... We joke that the reason I married him was because he is so much taller than I am and therefore, um... 
very useful to me. But, but that's not that's not why I married him, but it's definitely a perk. Another thing he likes to tease me about is my inability to ask for help. Okay, we did it! By ourselves! We're big girls! Alright, so we're gonna measure and see if we can get 18 inches without without a uh, break in the moisture seal, or the, uh, yeah, the moisture seal, the moisture barrier. And we can. We're just gonna have to cut an inch off. Go right. on really really well and if you notice again I have the silver moisture vapor barrier stuff on top because I'm not defying gravity right now I'm not going to put nearly as many zip ties on this shelf as I did the last one I'm not going to put my duct tape in until I have the walls on because I think that'll give us a better seal. Yo, yo, fold them, fold them, fold them. I'm going to start by putting two on to hold the piece in place. Um, when I get the back on, then I will do multiple ones to connect both the back and the sides together 
into the foam. Hopefully. Hopefully. There are, uh, there are instructions for other germination chambers that involve using a hot water heater element. And I almost went with that idea. Um, if the crock pot doesn't work, we still will. Um, but I saw other plans using crock pots and I have a Instapot and a crock pot. So I'm gonna try that for now. See how that goes. Hold that one because I, if that were on the other side, that would make things a little complicated. I really feel like this isn't going anywhere. It's nice and firm. I don't feel like this side's going anywhere either. So I'm going to go ahead and seal it up with some of the wide duct tape. This stuff's so sticky that if you try to roll it down, you can feel the foam shift against the, uh, the resistance. And I don't want to rip it off. So we're at a point where we have everything but the doors. And I just realized that I need to go get some water to put into the crock pot so I can test it to see if it's gonna work. First things first. To reinforce this, I'm going to add a couple strips of the extra wide Gorilla Tape. Then when 
more strip of the narrower Gorilla Tape to reinforce. And make sure the seal is nice and good. The seal is really important because there are so many places where it can't be sealed. So I'm trying to make sure that all the places where it can be sealed are nice and snug. it you don't see as much bare light it's got a nice little closing clasp and we have a little extra protection with this duct tape although it ain't the greatest but hey it's something that I've never done before the last little bit is this combination thermometer and humidity gauge it's going to tell me what the temperature and humidity are. Funny how that works. Like right now, it is a whopping 59 degrees and a 17% relative humidity. What we're going to do is take, what we're going to do is take our handy dandy screwdriver. And we're gonna put, that, put another hole in the thingamabobber, the germination chamber wall. We're gonna make it a little bigger because we have to get this little probe through here. And I'm gonna squish it all the way on the inside and pull it out the other side. And I'm gonna tape it. I'm gonna pull this guy all the way taut so it can sit here. Uh, let's see here, like so. I have a little piece of foamy tape. I can use to stick it on there. put this dirty bucket of water in here. That's what happens you use your farm buckets to fill up your Instapot crock pot thing. All right, let's see here. Let's do slow cook. And let's increase our time to eight hours to start. And we're gonna close this door first. I wish I had done that. Oh, wow, the temperature has dropped. And we'll let this sit for a little while and see what happens to the relative humidity and the heat. Since I started the, the Instapot, the relative humidity has climbed from 19% to 65% and the temperature has climbed about five degrees. So I think this may actually be a, a pretty good success. Um, time will tell, but I, it's, it's looking positive so far.